Uh, Mr. Chairman, rather. Uh, since the mayor of my city was invoked, uh, let me say that uh, he is incorrect in saying that this is destroying the city. He is trying to get uh, federal aid because it's a properly a federal, not a city expense. But the fact is the $12 billion figure he mentions is over four years, $3 billion annual uh, expense, which is 3% of the city's budget, which we can absorb with difficulty, although it's properly a federal responsibility, which the mayor is pointing out. Ms. Narasta, I want to discuss some of the terms that are being thrown around by the witnesses and my colleagues. We have heard a lot about migrants who are encountered who are on the terrorist screening data set or the TSDS. Can you discuss this data set in more detail? Who's on this list? Does it only include known or suspected terrorists? It does not only include known and suspected terrorists. There is a reasonable suspicion standard for being included in these, but there is an exception uh, to this uh, based on a rational inference, which as far as we can tell is just when somebody says they should be on there and they put them on there. You know this is true because 99% uh, of people nominated to be on this list by other agencies, by other people in the government, uh, are included on there. There is no rigorous test or screening to put people Thank on you. this list. Thank you. In your testimony, you mentioned that the TSDS includes many false positives. Can you explain what a false positive is and why they appear in the TSDS database? So it's basically an erroneous match, mistaken identity. Uh, to be in this list, you have to have one biographical piece of information, and that's it. So a lot of people get caught up in this list, false flagged. Uh, because of that, we had a recent case of this with Ali Reza Hadari, a na Iranian national arrested along the border. He was flagged as a watch list. There were a lot of scary news stories about this that came out very rapidly about this Iranian national who was on the terrorist watch list, and then whoops, it was the wrong guy. Thank you. During the Biden administration, we've seen an increase in the number of people on the D TSDS database who have been apprehended along the southwest border. While this is still less than 1% of all apprehensions, can you discuss some of the potential reasons for this increase over the last couple of years? For example, do migration patterns in the hemisphere, including increased migration from Colombia, have something to do with this increase of migrants on the TSDS apprehended on the southeast, southwest border? Not only is it very small, it is uh, minuscule, 0.0, .0 hold on, let me count the zeros, 0.007% of people apprehended by Border Patrol in 2023 so far have been on this watch list. Uh, I think that you hit on it directly, sir. Um, Colombians explain a lot of this. I ran a regression analysis this morning uh, about the number of Colombians coming to the border and it has a, it's the best predictor of the number of hits on this watch list. Uh, the CBP does not release the nationalities of people who are on uh, the watch list who come up as hits, but a great Washington Examiner piece that was linked, uh, leaked, uh, had some leaked data, that said that 25 out of 27 of those folks in the first half of 2022 uh, were from uh, Colombia, and as I said, in my uh, written remarks, there's never been a terrorist attack by Colombia and they don't target the US, but there's also a wrinkle in this data, which is when you take a look at border patrol apprehensions that lead to these hits and those through customs, uh, the number has actually gone down, has gone down since 2019. Okay, thank you. I have a number of questions which I'd, I'd like to answer quickly because we only have a minute. We've also recently heard the term special interest aliens. Can you describe what a special interest alien is? Yeah, DHS defines it as a uh, non-US person based on analysis of travel patterns. And well, it's a long definition. A lot of other things are put on this list. Uh, a lot of words in practice. An SIA is just somebody from a country that could have a lot of terrorists in it. It's not a meaningful are, metric. Are special interest aliens terrorists, are they even suspected of terrorism? Uh, no, in fact, um, Thank you. as DHS. According to one source, yeah. Border Patrol agents encountered 25,000 special interest aliens in fiscal year 2022. That's a lot of people. Has an SIA apprehended by the Border Patrol ever committed an attack on U.S. soil? Uh, no, and DHS explicitly says being an SIA does not mean uh, that you are a terrorist. Thank you. My last question is Is it possible that the number of SIAs have increased in recent years? because the decimation of our legal immigration and refugee systems 
have led people around the world to believe that the only way to immigrate to the United States is via the southwest border? Not only is it possible, I think it is extremely likely and the best explanation for why there has been an increase in illegal immigration and border crossers from around the world and from Central and South America. The U.S. immigration system is extremely restrictive. It is very difficult to come here. The idea that we have an open border is ludicrous. It is totally contrary to all the facts and to what's happening. If we have an open border, why are people paying five to $20,000 to be smuggled here? US, uh, Virginia and Maryland have an open border. I don't have to pay $20,000 to go from my home in Virginia to Maryland. Where is this open border that we keep hearing so much about? Thank you very much. My time has expired. I yield back. Uh, Mr. Roy. Mr. Narasta, prior to September 11th, 2001, how many